trapping the ball there. He's taking it every time, this and that. So that was the beauty of playing for Temple is you knew going in, we was always confident of our of our ability to win the game because we knew we was prepared mentally from coach. We knew what to do and we knew how to do it. And because we all coach was very particular on paying attention to detail. And that's something that goes all the way back to, to when he came on, on Broad Street and had Terrence Stansberry, Jimmy McLaughlin, Granger Hall, um, all those guys back then, all the way up until he stopped with Marty Collins and, and those cool guys. You take any of those Temple teams or you take any players, you can mesh them together because Coach just created that type of basketball player, that type of, of person, really, when it comes down to it. So it wasn't all about points and and statistics when it comes to playing for Temple. It was about learning how to play the game a certain type of way from a legend, really. You influenced me from a young man to manhood, um, not only in his teaching of basketball, but in his teaching of life. Uh, we had practice early in the morning, uh, where I had to get up at 4.45 in the morning uh, to get to practice by 5.30, which practice started. We had to be on the floor uh, and ready to practice at 5.30. That was a part of his discipline coming from him growing up and having to do his chores early in the morning um, to finish out and be off to school. But I seen it as if you can do that early in the morning, you can actually play at any time of the day. You can play early in the morning, you can play at any time of the day. That was one of his philosophies as well. It also ensured us uh, class being in class on time, you know, most classes started right at 8, 8.30 <clears throat> or 9 o'clock. And it gave you most of the day or the rest of the day in order to do what you need to do. The homework and all those things. Uh, and you didn't have to worry about going to practice at 3 or 4 o'clock in the afternoon and then having to rush back to eat and go to bed. Um, that was his main, one of his main factors in, in his life lesson teaching those life lessons. Basketball, he was, for me, he was a brilliant tactician uh, in helping you learn by giving you examples on the floor, which is situations on the floor with also correlated to life. Uh, slow to fast, uh, being able to look and see see and then act, um, and then he always talked about little small things, uh, time and distance, and, and that, that's when looking and seeing. When you are crossing the street, you have to notice how far or how fast a car is coming and the distance before you can act. So to see is to know, to know is to act. I see the car coming, I know how fast it's coming, and I can decide whether to cross the street or not cross the street. What I learned from Coach was actually how to coach and how to bring the classroom into coaching. Uh, one of my favorite stories about Coach was uh, me being at a practice and him going over entry passes. And he actually broke down the importance of entry passes into debits and credits and interest rates. Uh, to the point where I actually thought I was in, a, in an accounting class, but actually I was at basketball practice. Uh, he, he broke it down as reference to the perimeter player had to make the perfect parabola pass into the post, and the money that you deposit into the bank, which was the entry pass, the way you pass the ball and the way the post player received the ball actually determined how much money you were going to get back because the perimeter, the, the post defender could only guard the post uh, offensive player a certain way. If you made a bad pass, there's a chance that the ball could get tipped in reference to you getting less money back. And it was amazing. He talked about it for 45 minutes. But he was very good at being able to bring real life into basketball, uh, great with his imaginations and the way he explained things to the point where once he explained it, you knew what he meant and you weren't gonna make many mistakes. Uh, one of his favorite quotes is that there are a million mistakes in this room out of 15 people, 
Our job is not to make the same mistake twice. Very diverse, and people didn't know that. Coach was a teacher. He taught gymnastics. <laughs> he taught, you know what I mean? He wasn't just a basketball coach. So he was a teacher of life. Of, of And then, you know, you, you learn from someone that's 60 years old, 70 years old, by the time I get to college, it's nothing I can tell him about life. He didn't seen it's he done seen it three ways, three different ways, and I've seen it four times over. So at the end of the day, you learn it from a man from a different era who done seen it all and probably experienced it all. And the way that, that his mentality was and is to this day, we just don't have those type of people around anymore. Kids, kids aren't going to be fortunate enough to learn from those type of men. Those type of men don't exist anymore. And that's one thing that the game of basketball lacks is those type of father figures, but stern father figures. They're not going to pat you on the back all the time. And it's not always him complimenting you. It's sometimes it's just the fact that he's noticed me. The coach would often say that. It's not me yelling at you. What you need to be concerned about is when I'm not yelling at you. That's when there's a problem. Beyond the bounds of uh, player and coach, uh, it's almost like father son. He was my father when I was away from home. Uh, we talked all the time. We just didn't necessarily talk basketball. We always talked life. Always talked holding teams and, and doing things the correct way. Um, and always preparing yourself to be successful. Um, that was my main, my main thing during the day. And it, it, and it just improved me upon being uh, a better person and, and a better. Young man to a man. This is what Coach Cheney does today.